Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at the HP 14 CF0500SA. Uh, this video should also apply to other models based on this 14-inch uh, CF chassis. Uh, and what we need for this is just a small Phillips head screwdriver uh, and a plastic pry tool like this. Uh, so where I'm going to start is, first of all, we need to remove the two rubber strips that are the feet on this and we want to keep those which ones which because they have different uh, positioning lugs in them depending on which one is which and we have to remove these because uh, there are four hidden screws underneath them three at the back one at the front um, the screws underneath these feet are all the same uh, and the two at the front of the system are different these will nicely come out. You better when we turn it over. I'm just going to do all of these by tipping it, I think. That one's playing ball. So quite a simple laptop to work on this, um, relatively few screws to get into it. And this is a Pentium Gold based system in this particular model. Uh, it currently has 4 gigs of RAM and a 128 gig SSD, so we are going to be upgrading it to 8 gigs of RAM and 240 gig SSD as that is what my customer for it requires. So, having removed all the screws from the base, we are now going to flip the laptop over and we are going to take our plastic pry tool and go to the front edge here and push the pry tool in between the base and the palm rest. Uh, it's quite easy to see on this because obviously the base is gold and the palm rest is black. Uh, some models, you know, you just have to look for the join but we're just going to gently ease that up and we want to work from the front uh, it's always good to use a plastic tool for this if you use something metal you've got a much higher risk of indenting and marking the plastic and particularly if you've got a device that's under warranty you want to avoid marking it to make it not obvious that it's been worked on And also just, you know, you don't want to end up with big gouges in the plastic of your laptop, obviously. So having worked along this front to back, we now want to flip the laptop over and lift the top edge, holding the palm rest down, and then gently just lift up and... release the base. Now before we get started we're going to want to uh, disconnect the battery. In this case the battery is actually screwed in place and connects direct to the main board. So to disconnect it what we need to do is remove these four screws. Three at the top of the battery here and one at the bottom and with that done we can then lift the battery up and disconnect it from the main board. Now in this instance uh, we're actually upgrading this to a single 8 gig memory module um, because the person wants the opportunity potentially to upgrade to 16 gigs in the future so I'm going to remove the 4 gig memory module and in its place I am putting this single 8 gig. Now what we could do, you know, if you're wanting to go to a larger memory configuration, second DIM module clips in there, presses down, uh, but we are going to keep that for other uses, so we are just inserting the single memory module like that. Uh, the SSD here I believe is a SATA type 
uh, SSD. Uh, I think because this drive is uh, this model is available with both SATA and uh, PCI type SSDs. Um, I would be surprised if they do two different mainboard revisions for the two different types. Um, this one it, that I'm fitting in its place, however, is a replacement SATA drive. Uh, this is a WD green drive. I will put links for the drive that I'm fitting, uh, the tools that I use, and the uh, memory and the service manual in the description below, assuming I remember. If I don't, leave me a comment to tell me. So there we have upgraded our memory, fitted our SSD, and now it is simply a case of refitting our battery. So just a case of replacing those four screws. We do also have, say, the uh, M2 wireless card in there. That's really the only other component that you could easily replace in here. You can also see there is space here um, for where a hard drive could go. Uh, if you were going to fit one there, then you would have to get the SATA cable, which connects here, and also the brackets for holding the drive in place, um, which, knowing HP, won't be particularly cost-effective on models that don't come with the hard drive. Likewise, if you have a hard drive model, you may find that the M2 slot isn't present and is silk screened, in which case you can fit a SATA SSD there instead. Right, anyway, with those in place, we are now going to take our base and ease that back into place. We then open the laptop up and press around the palm rest to clip it back into the base. Uh, this I tend to find this way easier than doing it the other way of clipping everything in from the other way up. With that done, all that's left, flip things back over. Refit the screws. Uh, what you will find on this, the front two screws are different to the other four. You should see that when you remove them. Uh, it does have the sizes of the ones underneath here marked on the chassis as well. But just make sure that you keep these two separate. With those back in place now, We just want to put these strips back in and easiest way of doing this I find because they do stretch a little is put them down on each end and then you want to just, because they're slightly rubberized they can stretch and so on, so we want to just run along those. and smooth them out in place and again on this top one if we get the locating login on one end and the other far end and the central one and then smooth everything in from there I hope you found this video useful if you've got any questions please do just ask in the comments subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from us and give us a like if this has helped you upgrade your system thanks for watching